Hey guys, here's a quick project update for you. The carriers and the calipers on our painter, that's five coats of high heat paint, so they're ready to go back together. They'll be mounted to the wheel hubs and then I'm going to slap these uh, CVs. They're basically just blanks into the front wheel bearings, that's to stop them collapsing when I push the car around at the panel beater. So that's, that's the front brake story, now let me take you through the rear brakes. So as you can see here, I've got the old and new axle. I've got all, this is all the old components from the old brakes. Old stub axles, old uh, shoes and springs set up. This is all the new stuff here. So this stuff will be going into the old backings, covered with new uh, brake covers and onto this new uh, axle with new stub axles. So I'm getting ready to reassemble these. I've got the handbrake cables here. This stuff I'm going to soak in fuel, just so I can clean it up. I have a bit of an issue here where this bolt is actually, you can kind of see it there, this bolt is actually bent. So I need to hacksaw the side I have bought. This is all new stuff, all new bolts. I've also got a 7mm Allen key here and a new 22mm spanner. So let me show you what that's for. Basically, on the front shot, whenever I try to tighten this nut, the central shaft here is turning. So you use the 7mm Allen key to hold this in place while you tighten this. Now my toolbox only goes to 19mm, so I had to buy a new, uh, a new bolt specifically for this job. Same as with the rest of the stuff, I've got new washers, new bolts here. And I've got new bolts and everything here. I'm putting the original camber screws back in. Uh, but with new nuts. My nuts were stuffed. I'll try and include some stills when I edit this video later. Um, there are some stills on my Instagram and on my Twitter, I think. If you guys want to have a look there. I didn't paint the disc mating surfaces. I might rub them down with some vinegar and, uh, you know, water. It's one part vinegar to two parts water just to stop any surface rust here. But basically, this will get covered with the disc anyway. So, it's not a big issue. Um, and that's pretty much where we are now. I'm going to get cracking and see how far I get. I need to reassemble all of this stuff and then I want to get started on the rear shocks. You'll see I've done one shock. Sorry, these are old fenders from the vehicle. So I need to do this other shock. I actually have nicer springs which may go on here, but we'll see. I need to clean those up as well, but we'll see which ones I use. These are the, the original ones that came off the vehicle, so they're actually fine. The old shocks were completely stuck, so I'm glad I'm changing them. I would like to, if I get a chance, if I have time, give everything a nice soak again in petrol and maybe some fresh paint. But I mean, this stuff is covered by the wheels anyway, so it's not really essential. It's just a nice to have. And that's it for now, guys. Hopefully we'll have a bigger um, update after the work on this weekend. Bye for now. Hey guys, here's some stills of the final preparations before we put this whole car back together. I wasn't able to film or take photos of a lot of the work we were doing, simply because of the fact that we were working flat out from the time we started on Saturday to the time we finished on late Sunday night. I think it was about 18 or 19 hours in total. Um, you'll see I used an excessive amount of copper slip. This was planned on purpose. This is to stop any squeaks or rattles or anything from the mating surfaces. I really don't want trouble with these when I'm driving around with these on the vehicle. So I did clean them up before I fitted them to the car, you'll see in this final shot. But yeah, I did go overboard with the copper slip at first and I did tidy up a little bit towards the end. And here's just a look at the old shoes. You'll see there's plenty of compound on this still. The springs are still fine actually. The drum covers as well. Probably could have cleaned them up and used them. No idea what the wheel bearings are like. Luckily I bought all new stuff and we used that. So here's the old shoes and spring setup. You'll see that the center beam here is actually damaged. It's 30 years old, it's been badly fitted at some stains, it's rubbed against probably the inside of the old drum cover. I'm gonna have to find a new one. You'll see it wasn't supplied here. These are the new shoes, new spring sets, so I'm gonna have to hunt for one of those. These are the old drum backings now. I couldn't find these anywhere. So I had to soak this in fuel for about two days to loosen all the old dirt, sand them down, wire brush them, and then spray them. They came out really nice though. Uh, one of the things that wasn't supplied with the new kit as well, the locking nut and the locking washer. 
So I had to clean those up and reuse those. I wasn't happy about that. Now this is a shot, this is everything here had to go into the vehicle so that we could put it down on its wheels again. Here's another shot, it's, it's everything that we needed here. I ended up not fitting the anti-roll bar, but I'm going to have that powder coat and I'll fit it on later. Steering rack, this is a bitch of a job along with the boot, I'll outsource that next time. So here's finally the discs and the calipers, front shocks, everything in. Now I did use the old springs on the new stuff, now the reason for this being I am going to change the coilies at some point, so I didn't see the, the point now slapping on coilies and then sending that off to the panel beater to get covered in paint and uh, overspray. I'd rather just put regular shocks, old springs, no worries there. As soon as the car's back from the panel beater and 100% perfect again, I'll start looking for coilies. I'm probably going to go with Co uh, Coney, but we'll see. I'll shop around and, and see what my options are. So these are now the. Uh, drum back is going on, the handbrake cable, the cylinders and everything. Now guys, the next few images aren't actually mine. I found them here on this website. This is Dan Reed's Golf Jetta Mark III tutorial guide. I found this immensely helpful. He does ask for a $2 donation, which I've given him. And that's just to use his images here. Now, the next few images are pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to rate them. This is details. This is part of his tutorial, which I'll include a link to in my description. What, you, what tools you need, what you need to do, how to strip and rebuild the, the drums properly. Very informative, very helpful. A lot of his stuff is very tongue-in-cheek. I found it immensely amusing to read a lot of his stuff. So guys, if you use his page, give him the two dollars. Really, it's, it's worth it to have somebody else put this kind of level of detail in. If you read a Haynes manual, for example, it, it'll detail how to take stuff apart to a certain degree and then just say, reassembly is the reversal of disassembly. It's not helpful at all, but this guy's stuff, majorly, majorly helpful. So I was really appreciative of his, uh, of his guide, and really, two dollars is nothing. Let's be honest. All of this stuff here is, is basically exactly as I followed to the T. And after all of that work, 19 hours later, boom, she's ready to come off the axle stands and back on the ground and stand on her own wheels for the first time since October of last year. So what this means now. We can get on a trailer, take her back to the panel beater, get the paint fixed, sorted out, get the decals fixed, and then we can start with the real stuff, engine and gearbox, wiring. Hi guys, thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more and be kept up to date, please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to my channel. With your help, we can get this project complete and move on to the next one. Bye for now.